Awesome. Okay, um, uh, we'll get started. Um, thank you guys for coming today. Um, so, yeah, um, we're going to be talking about a new, a new MVC layer for June this day. Um, and we're kind of going to go through what kind of doesn't work in the current implementation, what we can look at to improve things, and comparing things to kind of other frameworks. So I'll just quickly cover who am I. Um, I've been developing Exchange since Regima for the last five years, contributing to the docs for the last three, um, and contributing to the core for about the last two and a half years. Um, since I finished my physics degree in last year, I have been uh, working as a developer for Very Group, and I have been on the PLT since 2014, where I've been in charge of releasing 3.4, I'm deputy leader of 3.5, and I'm also working heavily on Juma 4 and the framework. So it um, kind of gives you, and obviously I've got some other lit roles outside of that as well, but that's the main ones. Um, so kind of, if we're going to start reworking the MVC in Joomla, the overall thing that we've learned over the years is that people do not like change. Developers. Developers want things, some developers want things to improve, and some developers want their extensions to live forever and ever and ever. And if they find that one day it doesn't work out, they'll just go, no, screw it, I'm going to WordPress. And we found a lot of people did that. When we went from 1.5 to 1.6, it wasn't just users who moved to WordPress because of the break. Developers also moved to WordPress because they wanted their extensions to just keep working forever. So when we started looking at upgrading the MVC, the first thing is, is can we come up with three or four like major significant things you want to change? We can make other minor breaks, but let's stick with like three or four kind of keynote changes that we want. And so the first of these were that we came up where I came up with was let's remove JObject. JObject is a class that's kind of like a PHP 4 leftover really from like the early 1.5 days. It's from a time when private and public variables didn't exist, so we kind of hacked around it with the underscore prefixes, which is why we still have functions and um, private uh, private class files and some classes starting with underscores. Um, because you know we can just use the private and public class variables directly, and for kind of data sets where we're using get properties, set properties, we have J registry, which does what J object does and more, and it does it better, and it's a much better class. Um, the other thing that JObject gave us was J errors, which is kind of what was the basis of our error handling system. But PHP 5's given us exceptions. So again, this class is just junk at this point. It makes things notoriously hard to test because of its magic getters and setters. And it doesn't actually give you anything that isn't natively there in PHP or in the case of kind of larger data sets with J registry. So that's one aim. Second aim, currently um, we don't have a HMVC implementation. We have an MVC implementation. That means that you can't, you can only use it, um, your controllers and your models and your views in the context of that uh, extension. If you want to go outside of that, you have to require the FART class name, which is horrible. Um, I'm, I don't know how many of you are familiar with FOF, but this, you know, HMVC already exists in FOF. You can do in a module or a web service there, you can just call FOF dispatcher, get instance, input your input object, and just call dispatch, and it will render it. And that's so powerful, but core is sadly lacking in this. Currently, you can kind of get around it by requiring once the PHP controller file and then instantiating it and executing it, but it's not as strong. Yeah. Um, Aim three, um, when we moved to the framework and the platform, people did start work on this kind of thing, but it never really got too far. We came up with these kind of base classes that were there. Um, we, uh, the decision was made way back to go for single task controllers, um, supporting more than just kind of PHP native views. So Michael came up with this nice renderer class that was uh, I could support things like twig and mustache, and it gave you better data injection into your views, which gave you better separation of logic between your views and your templates. And 
but also the framework and the platform, they are just supposed to be reusable outside of Joomla. So they're very, very light. They, they don't give the CMS anything like what it needs. An extension developer, the average extension developer, would struggle to make anything out of it. You know, the CMS is there to kind of provide a more concrete implementation than what the framework or the platform gave. And finally, flexibility. The only thing that we can bet on is, is that whatever coding practices we have in Joomla 5, we probably haven't even heard of them yet. Five years is a long, long time. You know, we went from Joomla 1 to Joomla 1.5, Joomla 1.5 to Joomla 2.5, and the big code advances we made there. And a lot of the time, we didn't even, couldn't see it coming. And if we could have seen it coming, we'd have been better prepared for it. I can guarantee that in the future, we will not be ready for whatever comes. So we just need to make things as flexible as possible so we can drop in things, if, a, if at all possible, you know, build our interfaces up in a way that you know, we can build in replacement classes if we can, and things like that. So you know, use interfaces, use dependency injection, Look at what other people are doing. Interoperability is key at the moment. Being able to take another project's class and just drop it in as a replacement in your own. You know, take out JHTTP and replace it with Guzzle or something like that. Just build an interface that wraps it. So, And then if Guzzle one day falls out of fashion, you can pull in your next big HTTP library and drop that in. And as long as people are just using the interface methods, you're fine. Obviously, JHTTP isn't related to MVC. It's just a proof of concept idea. Um, so I'm going to kind of go back and just so I kind of talked about this a bit, but the kind of platform framework MVC classes that got introduced, they were introduced in 2011 and moved into the CMS in 3.0, and the reason, and then we moved all the uh, old MVC classes to that legacy suffix, which is, as you all know, why most extensions are only 255 and higher. Um, it was first used, but they. Actually, uh, there was a GSOC project by Budima, and he introduced some more kind of CMS implementation of these single task controllers um, using the new MVC in uh, June the 3.3 in a refactor of the ComConfig component. Um, when in also in 2013, uh, the, plat uh, the frame platform moved to the framework, these new MVC implementation was pretty much left unchecked. We added in the namespacing, and that was about it. Um, oh, and obviously we removed the J factory coupling. Um, but I mean, even outside of June, these things have started to be used. So J issues itself uses the new controller in the model, although it didn't use the view because the view was in the platform was much more like the conventional view. So, so actually, technically, we are using the view package where we're implementing. Okay, yes, you're implementing the interface, but you're using your own custom renderer. You're not using the HTML renderer. Yeah. 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 So they're using the view interface, but they're not using the actual HTML rendering class. They're using their own kind of renderer that allows you to use, um, well, they're using a Twig implementation, but the way it was built, you could port in mustache or plates or something like that really easily. Um, but Budima was using there the, uh, the CMS kind of view style because obviously you wanted BC, well a relative amount of BC. So um, what actually changed in these kind of simplistic implementations? Well, controller model and views now all have interfaces for easier plugging and playing. You have dependency injection, so you now can inject your application and your input objects into J controller, for example. You have um, multitask controllers currently in the CMS. You have that execute method that calls a task, and then that task is the function name. And you also you can play about with aliasing those tasks and things as well for some more simplicity. Um, but you kind of you move to a single task implementation, which means that you have for every task you have one file, and that file has one method, which it, well it can it has one public method in the interface, which is execute. It doesn't take a parameter. And you just execute that one task, and you have a large number of files, which has some advantages and some disadvantages. It's, um, as I said, we're removing J objects. The model state is now a J registry rather than J object. 
Um, it's not actually a big change. You still have your set and your get methods. but And yeah, views now have an explicit HTML class as well. Before in Joomla, it's actually not so straightforward to create non-HTML views. It's doable, and we do it, but it's not as straightforward as what it should be, especially in the days where we're looking at web services with lots of different view formats. So yeah, so very quickly, I will just go through controllers, no longer extend J object, all single task controllers. So this is kind of the implementation that we kind of started building up. We started looking at you know, what can, you know, facing those aims in mind and what the platform of CMS had already done. This is what we came up with for the GSOC 14 effort. And we said controllers no longer extend J object. Um, they're single task controllers that extend this kind of base CMS controller with a load of helper methods effectively. Um, single task controllers though, however, it kind of felt like having built this that they gave us huge numbers of files and large extensions. It, it's hard to say whether it would work or not, um, but I think the general feeling around the community is, is it probably won't work. I think it's likely that when we get to a final implementation, we probably won't be sticking with single task controllers. It's not a decision that's been taken any, at any level, but I think the reality is is that there's too much people, who, there's too many people who don't want it, and there's versus the number of reasons to actually be adopting it. Um, I mean, it, it, as I say, it does have some advantages, and um, that I think just yeah. And finally, um, you can inject your J application, your J input, and your J document into the controller, um, all of which are helpful. Um, models, um, they no longer extend your object. There's a, in the 2014 implementation, we kind of had a nested model structure to improve reuse of code. Um, so every single controller inherited another, uh, every single model, sorry, inherited a model, so it can't, you could kind of start stacking up. You kind of had this kind of nested stack of like seven or eight mod, uh, models, but each of them gave a different layer. So you, know, you had your form layer, then you had your uh, single object layer, and I can't remember the exact order of which they extend from each other, but you kind of see how it fares. And then you always extend the bottom level, but it always means that you can go back, or at least in the standard implementation, you'd extend the bottom level. But if you ever needed to go and override it there, you could just hook in at whatever level you wanted to. It has its positives and its negatives. Um, because obviously, if you want to override something that was at like level two, then you lost a whole load of um, layering in your model. Um, and so we kind of, we've since started kind of looking around at alternatives. But the problem is whether you do nested, you stick with the current kind of structure where there's a lot of copy-paste code and it's not particularly dry, whether you do something more kind of out there, it starts to devolve a long way away from what we currently have. And as I say, you've always got this risk that extension developers don't take it up, which is something that's going to be, could potentially be giving you significant issues in the future if everybody's still sitting on the legacy MVC and all their extensions. Um, and so moving on from that, um, the other two things are just J object removal again, as well as it no longer extending J object. As I said, the state is now a J, is now a J registry object rather than a J object. And J model get item used to return a J object and now returns the standard class. Um, views, uh, they no longer extend J object. Um, they use the renderer interface um, found in the JSUs tracker. Um, it was initially under Michael's repository, but it's now sitting in uh, version 2.0 of the framework. Um, the default renderer that will be used will not be twig or mustache or plates or anything. It will be our own J layouts that Roberto has been working on. Um, yeah, um, largely because people have started using it and people are liking it, and there's still a feeling, there's still definitely a in-house feel to the CMS that we want. Um, 
But the important thing about J layouts is that you still get the injection into you. You still get data injection. You don't have this kind of class that has a require once into a template file somewhere. So you still get a lot of the benefits you get out of the templating in that you would get out of Twig or Mustache or whatever in J layouts. Um, we also remove the magic gets and set methods that you have in JView. Um, like a lot of people will use this get items, this get pagination or whatever, which magically gets your model and then calls get and then whatever you've asked for. So get pagination, get items. And it makes it super hard to unit test things. It's not great architecturally and it doesn't actually give you much over just calling this get model get pagination. So, bin it. Um, so supporting old views. So one of the things about moving to some kind of J layout kind of based architecture is that a lot of people have template overrides for the old views. And you've got to somehow deal with that. Um, and probably the way to go about it will be is just going to be creating like a legacy view class. We kind of started working on that, pretty much. It was generally called that, or something along those lines. But the biggest issue with it is, isn't the name, it's the fact that we have some J layouts from the early days where we're directly injecting JView legacy into the J layout. And yeah, all of you are grimacing and yeah. And there's horrible backwards compatibility, yuck. Um, and work, uh, trying to get a new J layout that does the same job and stuff isn't so straightforward because you've got to make sure that the old one proxies and if somebody had overridden the J layout but not the view or the view but not the J layout, all of that's got to proxy correctly and work correctly. So it's not straightforward. Um, but yeah, um, because in the CMS we're going to need to support the current templating system in three. Obviously, in June the four, we can drop this idea of this class-based stuff. But in three, which we're going to want to backport as much of this as possible to, so people can pick it up as early as possible. We're going to need to have some sort of you can transition, so people can transition their MVC code, but without forcing people to ditch all their users to ditch any existing template overrides. It just makes that transition period nicer again. Um, so that's kind of what we did in 2014. And so now I'm going to kind of look a bit, taking things a bit further. And one of the things that um, was missing from that implementation, and as we start looking forward to June the 4 at the moment, the CMS is really looking to work on is removing JFactory and implementing a DIC container, a dependency injection container, DIC. And um, we have a, D a dependency injection container implementation in core from the framework, which has been there for a while now. It's been like 3.2 or something that came in. Um, and um, you know, there are some framework implementations we've been using it. I chopped this out of one. And you can see that um, it's really straightforward. We built up our view object. Um, and then we just build the object and all the um, and the applicate and whatever dependencies there are, so the database and all that and the state and all the rest of that are just automatically dropped in if they're stored in the um, DIC. And if they're not, you get a new object initiated. Um, so dealing with it in core, though, if you want to backport this let you want to backport this new MVC layer into the three point X. There's an issue, right? Because we do have JFactory. And how do you work around that? Because you've somehow then got to have a DIC container, which is also giving the same data back as your um, stuff that's coming out of JFactory at the moment. And so there's kind of a variety of ways you can go around it, probably. But nobody's really tried so far. Um, until last night, somebody pointed out to me uh, somebody had kind of gonna start going around it. Um, I have no clue how well this works, I should point out at this stage, because as I say, I got showed it last night. But I thought it was quite cool. Um, 
So somebody has their application object and they're just proxying it to jfactory get application. Their jdocument object gets proxied to jfactory get document. And I haven't tried dropping it in, as I say. Again, I got traded it last night. But this might work. This might be enough for 3.x to get things going. And then in Joomla 4, obviously, when we can break BC, we can properly create the provide. You know, we can create the service providers properly as it should be done, really. Um, the other thing is dealing with responses. One of the things that Chris flagged up in his talk on web services the other day was our controllers perform redirects, and that makes them unusable if you're not you know, in web services, you, because you just redirect before you get your data back. So actually, you have to play directly with the model rather than being able to reuse the controllers. So what a lot of non joomla frameworks use is they have a response object set in the application. So um, Symfony have their kind of uh, this kind of response object. I don't. Can you guys see this? Yeah. Ish. Okay. So they. Sorry. I can see the orange isn't coming up very well. So they have a response object. Um, they have whatever their uh, actual output is. So whatever content, be it HTML, gents, and whatever. You have your your HTTP headers and your HTTP response code set. Um, yeah. Um, can't remember. Off the top of my head. Oh yeah, that's just that's just for Jensen. It's just for it's um it takes in data and gives that out as it just in Jensen format. It's nothing like as what this is. Um, it's specifically for Jensen. And it doesn't send out all the headers either. Um, yeah, so um, that's kind of the symphony way of doing things. Um, and this gets set in the application. And so, and also it can be edited afterwards in the application. So, you know, web services could come along and say, oh, I can see that there's a, re uh, so, so they, if you're going to perform a redirect, they have a redirect response that extends out of this response class. And so, if the web services came along, they could see that there's a redirect response there, but they don't want to perform a redirect. All that's important for them is they've saved the data via the controller method. Now they can um, do whatever response they want. Um, and yeah, so that's just a standard kind of controller using the response. So they have their you know, index action or whatever, and they just respond. Um, so that's just with the content in, and by default, it is HTML, I believe, and um, has an OK response. But obviously, you build it up like um, Twig and stuff can actually be built to return the response object and stuff like that when you start getting into kind of more comp like real, real world examples. Um, but if you're going to implement this, there's some barriers in the CMS. Um, I can't remember if I had the Zend one first. Yes, OK, so this is actually a Zend, a Zend framework implementation. This is a dispatcher class. So what you have is uh, in Zend, you have controllers implement this dispatcher class, and all controllers are added as a service as a service provider to the DIC. And um, all you do is you get your um, controller out of the DIC, and you call dispatch. Whereas in Symfony, you're injecting your container into the controller. So there's different ways of working on it, but you can see, again, they have the request interface, which contains all the data coming in, and the response interface with the response object that comes out. So again, you can kind of see this kind of common ground here between the frameworks. So if I kind of list kind of pros and cons. So the pros are that redirects can be handled at a later stage in the application cycle, which means that the controllers are usable in a kind of web services context. Um, it also makes easier unit testing. We can test the, we, it means, that, you know, when you have a controller, you some, then have to create some kind of um, version. You have to create a, a mock of the controller that's going to override the redirect method in some way. Um, whereas here, you can just test what the outgoing response object is, and it contains the correct data. Um, 
con is it's more work for extension developers to implement than what it is currently. Currently, you just echo out your response and that's it, your job's done. Um, and it's probably a higher entry point for developers as well because it's just another thing in the API. Any developer can return echo some text out, but now a developer has to look up the response object and work out how it impl is implemented. And it sounds like it shouldn't be important, but people do actually, you know, there's always a barrier to entry and we don't want to massively increase it. And like one thing may not be a lot, but suddenly you add it up and people go, oh, I'm not interested anymore. So it's, it's a con. Um, so, okay, so how do you, how would you return this response object back? Say if we were to theoretically implement it, how would you return it back? Because currently in our component executor file, we just have an output buffer. And that just looks for the contents and returns the contents back. So you've got to somehow support that because I don't even see in Joomla 4 that ever, or at least I don't see in Joomla 4 that going away as a piece of functionality because one of the other things it theoretically allows is for you to build non-GPL extensions. It's really hard because it means you can't even use JApplication or anything, but theoretically you can build your own Joomla extension that isn't GPL because you can just not use any of the CMS code. And because it's just requiring a file, it, it doesn't get affected by GPL virality. Um, but currently, so yeah, so currently we just retrieve the output buffer. So you need to find a way that um, you can kind of, one option is you can kind of have that kind of dispatcher interface that we saw in Zend. We can search for this dispatcher and execute it, kind of like what FOF2 did. You search for the dispatcher, class and if but ex instead of you having that in the entry file you have that in the component helper itself the component helper will search for a dispatcher file if it finds it and the class inside there adheres to the standard and implements the dispatchable interface we can dispatch it and get a response object back set the response object in the application and we can fall back to using the current output buffer method that's just giving us that kind of content part of the response object, and then the component helper can finish the rest of that response object up. So like, you know, it will be a HTML probably and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so J component helper then generates the response object based on the data returned from the output buffer, which is literally just the content. Yeah. It's one, it's not ideal, but it's a way of working around what we have and implementing new functionality. And that's the thing in the CMS is that a lot of what we do is we're going to be, if there's some significant behavior that's going to make it a real pain for developers to implement, you want to preserve that for probably a major version. You'll eventually drop it, but things like having the output buffer and response objects, you're probably going to want to be able to support that throughout the Joomla 4 cycle and then look to drop it in 5 when people have had the chance to look at it and go, oh, wow, this is clearly better. But we have to work around that in the meantime, because at the end of the day, it's our code that's been sitting there for the last 10 to 15 years, depending on whether you count Mambo or not, um, doing it the other way around. And we, you know, it's, it's our job to persuade people that this new stuff's better. It's not their job to go, oh, well, I must blindly follow, and because there are alternatives out there. The reality is, is that, especially with things like code coming and reusability, it's easier than ever to swap between, um, you know, you're building your own custom thing or moving to WordPress or moving to Drupal. So the last part of my uh, thing, I'm just going to talk about what you can do in Legacy MVC to kind of prepare yourself. Because there's things that you can do now, kind of best practices that you can follow that are going to make life so much easier for you to transition, whatever the new implementation looks like. There's so many things now that we do that you can kind of make better. Um, so first of these is, is that start getting out of the idea of using the populate state method in your models. The populate state method gets things from the application and the input object. Those things both belong in the controller. 
build up your state object in your controller and inject it into the model. The current CMS supports that. You can call get model and then set state. The set state still works and it'll take, you'll have to build a J object rather than a J registry object, but it works. Um, stop using get in your views. Instead of using this get items, use this get model get items. Because I can guarantee you, whatever implementation gets merged, this is going to get removed. Um, and clean up your views. There's still far too many times where we've had client projects coming and I've seen people making database queries inside the views. No, please don't. Please, please don't. Um, and if you make sure that all your data getting stuff from the model is contained in your view.html.php or view.jensen.php or whatever you're using. Because if you have just um, dollar this, you know, whatever, in terms of your class bars, then moving to J layouts is probably going to be, if you want it to be as simple as changing this to display data. It is literally that simple. And it wasn't. Like, I kind of built a... Uh, like 90% functioning version of com contact. Um, like the 10% was, as I say, these J layouts that had the JView legacy bit implemented that didn't want to work. But the majority of the views, I just swapped this for display data and it worked out of the box pretty much. Um, try and reduce your dependencies on J object. There are some places where it's just not going to be possible at the moment. But there are some places where you're probably creating an item that could be a standard class or a, J or a J registry object. Try and start moving yourself to those kinds of implementations because they're going to be the stuff that continues. And Joomla 4 will almost set a Joomla uh, J object is now deprecated and should be removed soon. Um, and yeah, um, try and use a standard class where possible because always native PHP is best PHP. But you know, if you do have more complicated structures, don't be afraid to use a J registry object. You don't have to suffer through standard class. You, know, you can use your set and your get methods. And J registry gives you the extra implementation to you know, export the stuff as a YAML structure or an XML structure or a Jensen structure. You, know, you may not be using that implementation, but it's always useful to have in your back pocket. Um, try and use exceptions where possible rather than J error. Again, sometimes it's not possible. But it, there are many places where you can do that and without any issues, especially in your models and stuff. You can actually throw exceptions, and as long as you make sure that you're catching those exceptions at some point, you might have to override your controller methods, which are implementing models, but it's possible. So what kind of things do we have to work with now? So I've kind of given you some stuff that we did. I've given you some stuff that I like the look of. Um, so, number one on this list is sort out this stupid issue with JV legacy objects being inserted into J layouts. It's a pain, but it's something that needs to be done. Two is um, one of the things that we didn't do in the GSOC 14 implementation was kill the populate state method, and it needs to go. Yeah, I can see some people nodding. Um, there's various ways you can do it. You can either inject it directly into your controller, uh, sorry, into your model, or if you're building it with a DI object, you're probably going to have to use the set state method. But it doesn't particularly matter as long as you get that state injected in, because the populate state is doing the right things in the wrong place. Um, try and implement controllers that control. If you're going to stick with single task controllers. You want to try and implement controllers that can call the controller. So instead of having save, close, and a save and close controller, you want to have the save and close controller just being something that calls the save controller than the close controller, which sounds really straightforward, but it's not that straightforward because orders of the way you call things start to become super important. And the way that one controller deals with things, because it needs to be self-contained as well, may start affecting the way that you hit another controller. And it doesn't become quite as easy as it sounds. We looked into it, and it's really, really hard. And we just didn't have the time to go through it in the GSOC time. If you go back to the multitask controllers, a lot of that was really good. Uh, so 
So yeah, uh, it's something to think about. I mean, as I say, the single task controller decision is not something that's being made, but my feeling is is that it's probably going to be dropped. Um, we had these kind of factory classes that we're using in the controller for injection. So to try and make things more abstract, there are things that we kind of know that are going to be refactored in the future. Things like um, session checks. J session is uh, due for a massive refactor. Um, so when you do J session check token, when you do uh, creating language strings, me and Michael are currently working on a fairly revamped language package in the framework. So again, if you can chop those into an external factory so that people can just call factory translate, factory check token, when we move from Joomla 3 to Joomla 4, it's going to make that transition so much easier for people. Um, unit tests. Um, because of things like redirects and all that kind of stuff, it's still pretty hard to actually unit test what we have now. Um, creating a response object, and dealing, I mean, they're easier to unit test, but they're still not simple to unit test. Um, and there's lots more we can do there. So when can you kind of expect a new MVC layer? Well, for the last five to six months, I haven't been particularly active on it because I've been doing a lot of the PLT stuff for 3.4 and 3.5 um, and the framework. But um, with the uh, HMVC layer being pretty much going to be required for the new web services stuff that Chris is working on for 3.6, it is going to start back up again. And you know we're going to need people to start helping out on it. And so if any of you guys are interested, then please contact me, let me know. Um, you know we're always happy to have more people on the case and helping out. And yeah, thank you very much. Um, time to wake up, Chad. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Um, a lot of people use it for setting messages when there are errors and all that kind of stuff. But the controller is responsible ultimately for sending those applications. If there's an error in the model the, and you're in, in, queuing it into the application, then the controller needs to translate that message or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I have sold a few issues for this. So, for example, redirects is one line issue. That's the Basically, it's just a change to have redirect to have set redirect. And then before having to get uh, redirecting your application is kind of your OGC. So for OGC, you need to never use it. Yeah, I mean, we kind of, I stuck with the set redirect, then calling out redirect in a dispatcher, in a dispatcher class. So short term search issue. For longer term, you might need to get that. I'm, so 
I'm liking the response objects. Me and Michael have been talking yeah, about yeah. implementing them in the application yeah, as a framework. Is, is wrong, so for example, if you have a uh, model, that model needs its own response because of that allows you to catch. Otherwise, you cannot catch. But I think you need two levels, really. You need that kind of global kind of HTTP response, and you need a kind of second of response kind of object for the models, and the, yeah. Honestly, I still haven't found a model structure I like yet. I, I was having a chat about this at JWC with Chris, and we kind of discussed that idea of kind of, um, oh crap, what was it? What were we discussing? Yeah, composable models. But they, which are nice as well, but they were just getting so far away from what we have in the CMS at the moment, I was really worried about users actually being able to use them. Um, yeah. I mean, like, Budama stuck with something very similar to what Budama stuck with something very similar to what we had at the moment. Um, oh, not exactly the same, but you know, there were changes that made things better, but it was base level similar. No, sure. I mean, like, just having the nested model layer was a logic break in that sense. Um, I'm not. I mean, I think the models, in some ways, are what needs the most work in Joomla because at the moment there's just way too much copy pasting of code. Like, you want your form objects and stuff, but then you have to copy it all out of J controller form and drop it into whatever the other model is you're extending from. Stuff like that. I mean. Some of that's what Redcore kind of did was you know they extended out of the existing controllers and at least they removed a load of the copy paste, but it's not a long term solution. Yeah. How do you feel about this virtual radical change going for keeping the legacy like it is now and then uh, for Julia 4 and then uh, the specification creating model creating uh, the main Um, personally, um, as I think you probably gathered, I'm not a fan of massive, massive wholesale change because I think it's just, you know, we all are aware that Juma has issues with user base leaving. And I think what keeps Juma very strong compared to a lot of other extensions is the third party, the, you know, the third party extensions. And so that means we have this obligation that we need to make things, yes, we need to make things work for extension developers, and we want to attract new extension developers in, but we also need to make sure that every five years, extension developers aren't having to rewrite from scratch their code. But I think it's. But it's about.
he makes and he does it like basically twice to the people. And he keeps saying every three years or three two weeks my entire thing is over. Yeah, but model by model, whatever they want, whatever they need, or whatever they have to rewrite that or something, then yeah, I mean, if you guys would rest and three hours there, and they spend four hours there. I mean, yeah, if you can get progressed with model by model, that makes it better. Because I think what you absolutely have to have is, you need, like, like why I was having that kind of legacy DVD structure. You know, they can start moving in now, but it needs to be progressive, so they don't have to do a major version upgrade because everybody's template overrides is going to break, but they can change their NBC layer across, have the old view structure, and then when the time comes for them to do the major version upgrade, they can then move right. across. And that's why so, would be yeah. afraid to do some more radical change. Radical if you can. As long as, as long as you can. If you can make it super things. progressive, you know, so you can progress across, I guess it's acceptable, but you still need to make developers feel like this is Joomla. Like, even if they're learning something from scratch, it's still a, do I, you know, it's not just the time rewriting the extension, it's also the time learning the new API and stuff as well. So, yeah, it's hard because the model API kind of really sucks. And so you don't want people to feel like they're stuck with this kind of horrible code base. But you also don't want to make them think, is it worth me learning the model, new model API as well? And I mean, that was kind of like the halfway house that we stuck with like, when we did this kind of model extending from model, because a lot of the methods were the same. The API itself was the same, but it avoided the copy pasting and stuff. Well, uh, but, I, I don't think it's too bad. Yeah, it sucks because some is say if you buy API it sucks, I can go and take a look at WordPress and then Oh well, exactly. Yeah, sure, sure. There's, there's always somewhere that there's success more. Yeah, yeah. But that doesn't mean that you won't have success. No, precisely. I mean I'm open to it, but I need to see like concrete how you get that kind of progressive transformation from legacy to current structure. There are two examples for that. One is four and the other one is a wow. I haven't looked at wow. Uh, I looked at four and four still involves it's super hard. I don't think you can really kind of like partially move off across. You have to take the leap. Otherwise you don't get the benefits. Awesome. As I say, if any